How's it guys, this is Davey FP and welcome back to the Fantasy Premier League video here on my channel. Now in this video, I'm going to take you guys through the Elite 64 team selection for the upcoming Game Week 11. So if you guys don't know about the Elite 64, basically FPL General's Invitational Mini League and it contains 64 of the best managers in the world. Now, I'm not calling myself one of the best managers in the world, but I am amongst those 64. Managed to an entry in the season I finished 22nd in FPL General's Community League. So I guess I am a little bit out of sorts in that league, to be honest. But luckily, I do actually have the league code because I'm in the league. So I can go and type it into my Python script, get all the details of the lead 64 and these top 64 managers, and then replay them to you guys. So if you guys are new to this series, I'll be going over the template team. I'll then do a team selection on that template. I'll also be predicting transfers for the upcoming game week 11. And I've also incorporated a new rank metric now that we've passed 10 game weeks. So that's something you guys are interested in. Sit back, relax, and let's get straight into it. So before we get onto the actual template, I just want to give you guys an update to the wildcard situation. As you guys have known, game week 8, game week 9 are pretty popular kind of wildcard weeks. I wanted to see if game week 10 was just the same. So in terms of game week 8 and 9, through the past two episodes, 78.1% of the Elite 64 have actually used the first wildcard. And that has grown 1.6%. So yes, one manager in the Elite 64 used the wildcard chip in game week 10. That's obviously going to result in 20.3% not having used the first wildcard. And they'll probably use it in game week 12 or 13. So those episodes in kind of game week 14 and 13 will be quite interesting to see how that kind of evolves the template. But the reason I am focusing just on the first wild card in terms of chip strategy is because the Freyat and the triple captain as well as the bench boost have been used by basically no one in these opening 10 game weeks. But if you guys do want information on that, I can simply go pull it. Just request it in the comments down below. But now going to the actual template of the Elite 64, I'm going to be going from left to right in terms of highest owned to lowest owned, and this is probably the most important part of the video. I just always find it interesting to kind of look at templates, ownership stats, don't know what you guys think about them, but you probably do enjoy them if you are clicking on this video. So without further ado, in terms of the goalkeeper pairing, not many smiles are going to happen in game week 10. Nick Pope at 60.9% and Danny Ward at just under 60%, and unfortunately didn't get you any points in game week 10. Now besides these two goalkeepers, there's a massive drop off from these two. We do have someone like Araya and Aguayita, but their ownership is pretty low within these 64 managers. Now obviously the wild card is in game week 8 and 9, probably went for Pope, and that's why his ownership is so high, but from that game week 8 wild card, there's been no clean sheets for Newcastle at all. At least Danny Ward managed to get one last game week, back to the normality though, with him kind of conceding quite a few, and losing the clean sheet to Bournemouth in the second half. But enough about the goalkeepers and their kind of underperforming nature, let's go on to the defenders, and we actually have a tie for the highest owned defender. It's going to be Jao Cancelo and also Reese James. So both coming with an ownership of 92.2%, and I'll give you guys a guess of who was the favoured option in game week 10. Obviously going to be Cancelo with 18 points over Reese James as one. Now it was super annoying, and I'm pretty sure these managers, 92.2% to be precise, of the Elite 64, were super angry at Graham Potter for benching Reese James in practically the easiest fixture that Chelsea have in the opening run. Was almost a locked-in clean sheet because of Wolves' struggle to score over these opening couple game weeks, and that's why that Reese James benching was super annoying. Just compare that to Jao Cancelo, Southampton at home gets a goal, a clean sheet, and an assist. At least he's getting the points for his ownership. The next option with slightly less ownership than these two is going to be Kieran Trippier with 90.6%. So that's super high in terms of the actual statistics. If you guys did wildcard in game week nine, chances are you might have not actually gone for Trippier, but it seems like he's in most of the Elite 64 teams. Now, like Nick Pope, hasn't got a clean sheet from game week 8 onwards. However, he has got a lot of attacking returns and bonus points to boot. But it will be interesting to see what the Elite 64 actually do with this defender slot because the fixtures are getting a little bit tough for Newcastle, but I guess Trippier always offers that attacking threat. Now, the next player is definitely going to be one on the transfer out list. Trent Alexander-Arnold unfortunately has came out today that he's probably going to miss two to three weeks. So if you guys do own him like 31.3% of the Elite 64, it's probably a transfer out. Luckily though with Trent, the most expensive defender in the game at the moment, so you guys can simply get anyone as his replacement. But yes, to say Trent has kind of underperformed, overall Liverpool underperforming would be an understatement, super disappointing, and he even got subbed at halftime after an injury in the Arsenal game on the weekend. When they're going to move on to the cheap defender of choice, Gay from Crystal Palace, 26.6% actually rose in ownership from last week's Elite 64 team selection, which just shows you how good those Crystal Palace fixtures are. But overall, as you guys can see, definitely kind of a preference for the first three. And then there's a major dip off from the fourth to fifth highest owned. We're then going to move on to the midfield department. And we have a new king of the midfield. The highest owned midfield has changed from Martinelli to actually Madison. So Madison comes in with a cool ownership of 85.9%. And you can understand that after kind of his game week nine theatrics. That wasn't the case though in game week 10 against Bournemouth. Leicester seemed to kind of dissolve in the second half. However, he did have a couple chances. And I thought he might be unlucky not to have got an attacking return. Same can't be said about Martinelli, his ownership has dipped. I do think those managers will probably regret the decision to actually go without Martinelli, but he still is owned by about 81% of the lead 64. 
So yes, as I said, his ownership is actually dipped, and that's allowed Madison to retake the kind of highest owned midfielder slot, and I'm pretty sure those managers are pretty sad in the Elite 64. Then Wilfred Zars had a massive boost that's put him in third highest owned of the midfielders, 68.8% to be precise, and with just one assist in Game Week 10, really hoping that he can rebound and get some holes from now to Game Week 16. We're then going to have our kind of battle of the premiums. The first one's going to be De Bruyne at 45.3%. Definitely the most popular premium at the moment, but when you guys do see the next one, Mo Salah at 25%, you can understand that I think it's going to be a big shift from Salah to De Bruyne if Salah doesn't pick up his form quite quickly. So these two will be facing each other in Game Week 11, De Bruyne versus Salah. Who's going to come out best? My prediction, even though I am a Liverpool fan, is that Man City are going to take us to the cleaners, and I'm actually super happy to actually own De Bruyne. But this might be another transfer situation, but I do think if you own Salah, probably will keep him. And with the Elite 64 being so conservative, I think that's going to be the case. Then our final department to go over is going to be the forwards, and the only 100% owned player is going to be Erling Haaland. So yes, Haaland's the only option that is owned by every single manager in the Elite 64. Understandable though, no questions asked there. And when you guys do see the cab and see, it does reflect his ownership. So nothing much to talk about with him, but there is massive talking points about Mitrovic, and he's owned by 84.4%. Now I'm saying this because obviously Mitrovic is currently injured, don't exactly know if he's going to be back for Game Week 11 against Bournemouth at home, and if he is going to be ruled out for Game Week 11, I think that most managers might actually take him out. So it is super annoying if you guys do own Mitrovic, kind of missing Game Week 10, now potentially Game Week 11, so let's hope we get some positive news in the press conference come Thursday or Friday. Then our final forward to go over is going to be Ivan Tony at just under 36%. So no Solanke and his 8 pointers in the lead 64. However, he does have quite a healthy ownership, about 25%. But if Ivan Tony is the highest third option. Now, yes, he did get the goal, the penalty to be more precise against Newcastle. Wiping out that Trippier and Pope clean sheet. But I guess if you guys did own him in your template, probably quite happy that he scored. But as you guys can see, there's definitely a template forming in the Elite 64. I think that's thanks to the wild carders in Game Week 8 and Game Week 9. And that's what I've mentioned in Game Week 12 and 13. Can be quite interesting to see what actually happens with the template with the remaining wildcard ship. But what I want you guys to do is comment down below how many of the Elite 64 templates you guys do own at the current moment. My own team that you'll see in the team selection next is going to be 100%. So yes, I do basically own all the starting 11 options. Then my bench is slightly different. But let me know how many you guys own in the comments down below. Now before we get on to the kind of game week 11 team selection where I do predict the template and the chances, I want to give you guys an insight into the captaincy and that's right, Erling Haaland was captained by 100% of the lead 64. So all the managers actually owning Erling Haaland wasn't enough, all of them had to actually captain him but I think you guys can understand that after his good run of form and his scoring potential or even haul potential every single game week. So I just want to show you guys that the lead 64 is kind of reflective of the common manager Yeah, everyone's captaining Haaland at the moment and that's how I would suggest you guys do so as well if you want to be on the safer side. But also this kind of brings in that talky point of kind of a differential captain. Imagine the gains if everyone captains Erling Haaland and you captain another option and they end up hauling such as a Kinsella or Phil Foden. I reckon you'll be laughing all the way to the points bank. So let me know what you guys think about Game Week 11's captaincy. Are you on Haaland or are you on a differential like a Kane or a Son? But now going on to the Game Week 11 team selection where I kind of run through the template, pick my starting 11 and my bench from the highest owned options. Now first off, you guys can actually afford this team 0.6 in the bank, same as last week. The template team has actually not changed. So starting off on our bench, we have some highly owned options. Andreas Pereira, for example, is the highest owned midfielder at the current moment. And if you guys started him in Game Week 10 or if he's coming off your bench, you're probably pretty happy. We then have Neko Williams who unfortunately lost his position to Serge Aurea, which was a little bit predictable as Nottingham Forest have to show up that defense quite quickly. Then Gay obviously already spoken about him as our cheap option of choice. And then Danny Ward, and I'm bringing bring in Nick Pope here because there might be a debate of who to actually go for. So this might be one of those scenarios where you guys do play the odds. You probably own a Wolfred Zaha, so therefore keep Danny Ward on the bench because you hope that Zaha scores. Whereas I don't think many managers actually own those United assets. So currently, yes, I'm starting Nick Pope, but even though they haven't kept a clean sheet, maybe Danny Ward's the play to go for, but I can't when I do own Wolfred Zaha. Going on to the rest of the back line, we have Cancelo, Trippier and James who kind of pick themselves based on ownership. Tough fixtures though on paper, that's kind of the theme of Game Week 11. I think it's going to be a super high scoring one as there are some tough fixtures and they are away. So Liverpool for Cancelo, United for Trippier and then finally Aston Villa for James. The only one that I have some potential of is going to be Rhys James now that he has had his rest hoping that he does start in Game Week 11. Then our midfoot apartment, De Bruyne, Madison, Martinelli and finally Wilfred Zaha kind of also pick themselves and they all have relatively fine fixtures. That Liverpool versus Man City game is going to be super interesting because if Man City do well, the template's going to do massively well and therefore you guys need some Man City coverage. But I guess if you guys do own the Liverpool assets, probably not since Trent's injured and Diaz is also injured. You're probably hoping it's a high scoring one if you own Salah. But no complaints in terms of Martelli's fixture against Leeds away. Should be a good one with the way that Arsenal are actually attacking. Then we have Madison and Zaha facing each other and I'm hoping for a high scoring one there. Then finally, our forward line, I'm going to captain, or at least I'm predicting the template to captain early Haaland. Liverpool weighs a pretty good game, and I think that he should actually do quite well. Then we have Mitrovic against Bournemouth, where I do hope that he's actually going to be back to full fitness. I do need him on my own team, and the template also needs him to be back. 
as that's a lovely fixture. Then finally, we have Tony against Brighton, where I think this is a little bit of a tougher game. I do think it's slightly easier than Graham Potter's Brighton, as defensively, they don't seem as it should. But kind of going from the template to the team selection, you guys can see on screen, this is the current kind of template team selection. And I'll talk about chances at the end of the video. Now, as mentioned in the introduction, I've actually gone over and added a new feature to the Elite 64 team selection. It's going to be the rank meters. And what I wanted to show you here is kind of the rankings of the Elite 64 over the opening 10 game weeks. I always say kind of use the opening 10 game weeks as a reflection point. And now that we have had them, we can see where we are in the overall rankings. So in terms of the top 10K, 4.7%, so just under 5% of the Elite 64 within the top 10K, which just shows you how competitive the season's going to be. Then moving on to the top 100K, that's going to increase to 20.3%, so about a fifth of the Elite 64 are within the top 100K. And then finally, within the top 1 million, we have 72% or around about 71.9% to be more precise. But what I wanted to show you here is that in terms of the overall rankings, even the Elite 64 don't have that high rankings at Game Week 10. So please don't kind of lose the faith on having a good season. I myself in the prior seasons have got off to a pretty bad start, managed to rebound and actually had a pretty respectable finish. So if you guys are within the top 1 million, as are 72% of managers, I would still keep the faith if you're out of it, also still keep the faith. FPL is a luck based game and who knows when your luck's actually going to change. But if you guys are also interested in kind of the rank distribution, we're going to kind of do a distribution graph showing where these managers are ranked. So let me know in the comments down below if you guys are interested in that. But the final talking point to go over is going to be all about the transfer plan and unfortunately this week it kind of picks itself based on injuries. So the first injury that's going to be a big one is going to be Mitrovic. I think about 84.4% if I remember correctly do own him and therefore if he's going to be out for Bournemouth at home I can see some managers take him out. We then obviously have Trittig's on Arnold with 31.3% so if he's going to be out for 2-3 to three weeks as rumoured I'd probably also take him out as he is quite expensive. Other than that though, I always say that the Elite 64 is super conservative, so no kind of De Bruyne to Son moves will be taking place. Haaland to Kane probably won't happen as well, so I'm predicting the Elite 64 to bank a transfer as long as Mitrovic is back for Game Week 11. But you guys can let me know what you think on the current template, what moves do you think these managers will be making, and do you see any exciting potential moves that they can also make? But this is the best group of the video guys, hope you did enjoy it, please leave a like if you did and subscribe if you haven't subscribed yet. I will see you guys for tons of content coming up till that Friday night deadline, so please make sure that you do and set a notification. But I'm really signing off with Davey FPL and I'm out, cheers, bye.